Relax. Oh, sorry. Oh, Relax. <laughs> you always tell me you watch me click. So I, saw I didn't see she clicked. Well, hello there. Welcome to my shop. I'm James Wright, and we're going to have some fun tonight because we are making a turning saw. And in the last two videos, we shaped out the beam, we create the cross member, we created the mortise and tenon. We basically have a functional saw now. What we need to do is put a string across the top here, and in order to do that, we need to have a toggle that we're going to put in there to stop the string from unspooling. So this is the tensioning device that we're going to be putting on here. So hopefully at the end of this night, we'll have a toggle, we'll have a string, and we'll have a functioning saw that we can go to town and actually do some cutting with. Now, it's not going to be finished. We still need to make the handles. We still need to do all the shaping. We need to Wait, do hang on. Carving. Where are you? What do you mean? I don't see you in the video feed. Why don't you see me in the You're video You're blank. Feed? Can no one else see me? <laughs> well, let's, see, let's see what happens when I do this. Uh, can you see my hand here? No, I see nothing when I look at my screen. Can uh -oh. you pay? I gotta fix this. Let me let anyone else know if you can see me. There's always some technical issue. I... But, uh, you know, that's how it goes. No, see, like, that's all I see. I'm a ghost. <laughs> here, let me try something here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, let me try this again. Okay, well, he's not in front of it right now, obviously. Okay. Yeah, you can see me over here in the little window. <laughs> uh, microphone link time detect. Time. <laughs> this could get... <laughs> yes, he has a cloak like Harry Potter, right? Let me try adding one more here and see what happens. <laughs> no, it's not going to do it. Actually, you shouldn't. <laughs> but you should just keep going and see what... Just Oh, that's weird. All right, let me try switching the camera over. Oh, here, let me do this. Let's see if it disappears when I do this. Uh, let's see. That disappear and come back? Nope. Okay, one more thing. Can, are they saying in the comments that they, they see can't this? see you? Okay. Well, let's try this. Last minute problems. <gasps> no, no! And all else fails. <laughs> Device is not available. Let's see what happens when I pop it, pop it back in. There you go. Hey, there we go. We got picture back. Yeah, let's see if you exist now. Yes. Haha. -ha. Yes, now you do. <laughs> I'm glad I noticed before everybody else started commenting. <laughs> so the invisible talker is back, <laughs> and we're going to have some little bit of fun here. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> That's the fun of live. Um, so we've got the saw here. It is basically functional. We, in the last two videos, we created the beam, the stretcher between them, the, the mortise and tenon. Um, we put the, the, the tensioning devices, the, the, excuse me, the, the handle devices in there. So today we're going to be putting a string between these two beams, and then we're going to create a toggle that goes in between the strings so that it doesn't unravel. And at the end of today, we will have a functioning saw, and we'll probably make some cuts and have a little bit of fun with it. Um, the other things we're still going to have to do, we're going to have to make the handles for it, we're going to have to do some shaping, make it ergonomic and comfortable, and we're probably going to do some carving, and then of course finish work. So we still have a long ways to go on this, um, but tonight we will have a functioning saw. Um, if you want to follow along with this build, I actually have a kit from Tools for Working Wood. It is the Gramercy Turning Saw Kit. And it is a great um, kit. They have the plans drawn out, so you can actually go and buy those. Uh, if you go to Tools for Working Wood and search for Turning Saw or Bow Saw, you'll come across this kit. Um, um, the sound's not matching the video? Uh, yeah, there's probably going to be some issue because I restarted that, so oh well. Um, oh. Yeah, that's something I won't be able to Maybe fix now try until later. refreshing on your end because some, some are saying it is matching. So. Uh, um, a couple announcements I actually have um, because, let's see, not tomorrow, but Thursday, I'm going to be getting on a plane and flying out to Portland, Oregon, and for that is going to the Best in the West. It is the Pacific Northwest Tool Collectors Association, and uh, we're going to be doing it happen, an event that happens once every two years where they have a huge collection of tools for sale. So people are always asking me on the West Coast, where can I find tools? I can't find them anywhere. This is the one big place that happens once every two years. Um, and it happens in Portland, Oregon. You have to be a member of the, uh, the Pacific Northwest Tool Collectors to, to come to it. Uh, that way they can get around uh, the um, other problems that you have to be, it's a long spool, but you have to be a member. Um, but even if you're not coming to that, I'm going to be having a meetup, meet up, excuse me. Hmm. Ah, lunch is getting back to me. <laughs> oh guys, a... it could be a musical show. <laughs> <laughs> and a burrito the size of a football. <laughs> 
Um, yes, meetup Saturday, the 25th from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, at the Starbucks right across, the, and it is at the, let's see, 1020, uh, 10225 Southeast Sunnyside Road. I have all that information down in the description of the video, um, so go do that. If you're on mobile, if you look right beside the title of the screen, there's a little down arrow. You click that, and you can get to the description of the video. Um, so if you want to come and meet up with me there, a coffee shop, come hang out for a little while, say hey. Um, I will have stickers, and I might have some t-shirts. Um, depends on what I want to carry down there. Uh, let's see, next on the list is um, we're going out to Iowa. Um, might be going with my wife. We're still working out that. Uh, for the Midwest Tool Collectors Association. This is one of the two annual meetings that they have a year. And it is a huge collection of tools for sale. It is in uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, I think it is. But that is on uh, September 27th through the 29th. So I'll be out there as well as within um, October 20th, I'm going to be down in Texas teaching a dovetail class and another tool show down there. And then in May, we're going out to Makers Central uh, May 11th and 12th. So if you're in any of those locations, um, get a chance to come by and say hi. Um, I think that about does it for announcements. Anything I'm missing? Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm kind of using this live and have a little bit of an announcement session at the beginning for things that I like to tell people, but not everyone gets to see. So let me know if you think that's a problem. It probably is, but yeah. oh well. <laughs> it's not my problem. Um, let's get to making this saw. So let me show you a little bit closer view about what we're actually going to be doing here today. So we've got this set up here, and you can see how there's a blade down here, and we want to keep that blade in tension. So what we want to do is push these top together, and we'll wrap a string around this, and all you have to do is twist that string, and the more, the tur more you turn that string, the more this will tighten up. The problem is if you just let go of that, that, the string, it unspools. So if you put a stick in there, that stick will lock against this beam and won't allow it to unspool, so you can actually use this to tighten it up. But just sticking a stick in there doesn't look all that pretty, and we want it to be the right length because if it's too long, then it becomes a pain to unwind it. You want to have it long enough so it still hits the beam when it's straight, but if you slide it off to the side, then you can untwist it. Thankfully, the plans come with a really nice shape on here and size so you know precisely how long you want to make it. So I have this little scrap left over from cutting, and we are going to be making this uh, doohickey. Um, all you really need is a place to hold the string so it doesn't slide in and out. And the rest of it is schmoo. Um, so I kind of want to go through making this. A really simple, fairly easy thing. Uh, what they basically had is a dowel that would then be flattened out, but we're going to be using a shtick instead. Um, so let's, uh, let's dive into that. Shtick. I like using the word shtick. <laughs> Sorry, that just made me think of a conversation we had earlier today. What? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, my wife and I were, well, yeah, I won't. I won't we don't want to go in there yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to keep this g -rated. Okay, so while we're doing that, Kim Allen, back to your announcements. Will you be doing a video of the tool shows like you did last time? I'm hoping to. I want to actually do a live video like I did last time and show what is all there. Um, that's all dependent, though, on my internet connection. If my internet connection isn't fast enough to do a live video, then I won't do a live video. I will do an overview video of it later when I get back, so you can actually see it all, but we'll see how that goes. So, um, let me switch over to this camera. Now that I get things set up here. And ooh, I don't have to record, because huh, we're live. <laughs> so, oop, let's go back to this one. One man show, or one man, one woman. I guess my wife's manning it, so. My wife's womaning it. So we want to cut this to this length. The length doesn't have to be terribly precise, so I'm going to set it beside, and I'm going to put a nick on here, and I'm going to say I want it to be this long. And that is the length I'm going to cut it at, put it here on the bench hook, grab a saw, and slice it down. I'm not being really careful because the ends of this will not be seen. I'm going to be cleaning them up here. A couple quick cuts, and we now have a shorter stick. Okay, now it really doesn't matter what shape this stick ends up being. Uh, we can make it any shape we want. The only thing that's really important is that there's a notch in here that stops it so it doesn't slide across the string. We don't want it to accidentally slide off and, and come apart. And there's a, there's a bunch of different designs on how to make these. So we're just going to make something fairly simple. 
Oh, shoot, I should have gotten that out already. Let me flip back over to this while I get there. I thought I had everything out I needed. Apparently not. I'm going to get out my carving knives, carving chisels, because I'm going to get out a gouge. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can make this little notch. Um, you could just use a chisel. Um, actually, let me show you a little bit about that. You could do it with a carving gouge. You could do it with a saw and a bench chisel. You could do it with your fingernails. You could do it with a carving knife. Um, so let me show you a couple different ways to do that. So one of the things I love about hand tool woodworking is there are a thousand ways to do just about any task. Did that jump out? I think it did. Oh uh, yeah. There we're back. Uh, I see lines. You see lines? Yeah. And I gotta get a different cable here. This one is skitsy. So you're doing the Gramercy Tools 12 inch bow saw, right? Yes. Okay, I was just gonna put the link in because someone asked for it. Oh, so. thank you, babe. I knew I loved you. There we go. Do you see it now? Babe? Uh, yeah. Can you see my hand? Cool. Sorry. Making sure the feed was still on here. So what I wanna do is in about, uh, well, according to the directions, it's 7 eighths of an inch in from this is the center of the cut, um, which I could, you see here, I could line this all up and say, it's here, but it really doesn't matter that much as long as the distance from here to here is greater than the distance, pull this off, is greater than the distance from the string to your beam. So I have this lined up right here with the center of where the beam is and the string is here. So if the string comes off uh, right there. So that is where I want my notch to be. And the way I like to do it is just come in with a carving gouge, go across the grain, and you get these really fantastic curls. And you get to have some fun here. Work it down into whatever shape you want. But uh, you can do this with just about any tool you have on hand. Just the carving gouge is so much fun. Um, the one thing you have to be careful with the carving gouge is to go with the grain or across the grain because what happens if I come in from this side and I peel across, I'm just going to be lifting these fibers up and it's going to crack off this way. So once I come a little ways this way, I turn around from this side and go back a little ways from the other way. But the problem with that is then I always have this little burr here that I can never get to. So then you can go across the grain and remove that little burr. And if you want to, you can just keep going across the grain the whole way. Uh, let me show you with my favorite half inch chisel. And with a half inch chisel, you can do basically the same thing. It's just straight. You can chop in from this angle and then chop in from this angle and just keep going until you get to your depth you're looking for. It's just, you're probably gonna end up with a V gouge there, which works just as well. Instead of having the U shape of a gouge which kind of looks cool. Maybe I'll do that instead. Oh, that's kind of pretty. That's one of the things I like about just working off the handle. I mean, working with plans is sometimes good, but sometimes it's just, eh, it's kind of restricting. Whereas if you can play by yourself and have some fun whichever way you like it, sometimes you'll come across new things that you haven't thought of or seen before. Any questions while I'm playing with this? Um, let's see, there was, when Steven Alderson asked, if you could choose one piece of wood in the world, what would it be? White oak. Yeah, that's what we figured. Quarter sawn white oak. There you it go. is by far my favorite. Now, before I go too much farther in this, I want to actually make this toggle a bit thinner. Right now, it's probably about uh, three quarters of an inch or so. So I'm going to shave this down. And the fastest way to shave it down is to use a scrub plane grab my scrub plane. And the scrub plane has a cambered iron, so this iron sticks out a good ways here. It's probably sticking out right now a sixteenth of an inch here, and it's completely inside the mouth here and here. If I extend it out all the way, it sticks out almost an eighth inch in the middle. And this will take off a horrible shaving, but it takes off a lot of material very quickly. So in a matter of a few, few passes, I've taken it from three quarter down to almost a half inch thick. I'm going to take it a little bit more than that. And tonight is really kind of about having a little bit of fun. You can kind of express yourself in this piece 
There's no right or wrong. There, we're a little bit thinner than a half inch. Well, let's smooth that out because with that cambered iron, it's going to leave a big flat, uh, big scalloped surface. So now we can come into the smoothing plane. Wait until I get a curl from end to end, all the way across. Just like that. Pretty. That's what I'm looking for. So now that we have this to the thickness we want, then I can continue taking this gouge in all the uh, gouge the notch in all the way. I keep doing it with that V tool because I kind of like how that's turning out. So I'm just going to chop in a little ways from one side, then turn the chisel around, chop in from the other, and try and keep the starting line nice and straight across. And if I really, really cared about it, I'd probably draw a line all the way around it for where that starting line would be. But this is wood by right, and I don't care. I don't care about nothing. I don't care about nobody. Okay, maybe I do. My wife's over there. I better say something different. <laughs> what did you say? Nothing, babe. I love you. You're a man, but you can change if you if have to. If I have to. to. I guess. I, yeah, guess. That's, I thought that's what you're saying. <laughs> 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 Ten points to the person who gets that quote. Um, Got any questions? Oh, my gosh. There has to be somebody on here that knows that. <laughs> I'd be very disappointed in this group otherwise. All right. So, Aubrey Kuhn, I think. Yeah. What did you generally work with before you got that big stash of white oak? Um, white oak. <laughs> I use whatever wood I have on hand. If I have two by fours to work with from the construction center, I use those. I've worked with pallet wood. Um, I have gotten lumber from, um, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Dumpsters. Um, if you have a local cabinet shop, often you'll have a, um, a dumpster out back where they will gladly give you all the scraps out of there. Um, if trash day, you go around and you find old pieces of furniture, you can steal, uh, well, not steal the furniture, but you get, well, you get the furniture that they've been throwing out. A lot of times you can get some good wood from that. Um, I've done a video on how to get it from firewood. Most of the small projects I started off with, I did a lot with firewood. It's a good source of cheap lumber. I'm actually going a little bit steeper here. Just to match it up. There we go. So you can see I'm just kind of playing with this. Not doing anything particularly special or shiny. Just need a little bit of space in here. This is so much fun. I don't know why I enjoy this so much, but I do. Any other questions? Um, yes, there was where to go. Do -do 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 -do. Anyone giving the right answer to that statement? Raven's, right. Raven's Path. Um, and then Darth Dweeb, who I believe lives in Alberta, from what I'm gathering from the feed, ah. says, do you guys get the red green show? And it's like, in the U.S. Yes! We used to. It is a Canadian thing. It is Canadian humor, Darth Dweeb, but we enjoy it. Well, yeah, we that like and I, humor too. I used to live in northern Michigan, and northern Michigan is very Canadian. It's a... Uh, yeah, there's, there was a, uh, a, tr a, uh, a northern Michigan, a Uper as we call them, there was a guy who bought, I think it was 500 septic tanks, and uh, his intention was to invade Canada as soon as he learned how to drive them. <laughs> Sorry, I like that one. It's been a while since we've watched it, but we enjoy Red Green. I mean, don't you think that Jane's in like 30, 20, 30 years? I mean, yes. I'm a man. Except I can change. You don't have as much on top. I mean, have to get you a hat. But, anyways, um, there was a question, though. Oh, Stephen Alderson again. Why did you start doing woodwork? Oh, my dad did it. So, why <laughs> shouldn't I? <laughs> if you know anything about me, I love chamfers. So, that's what we're going to be doing at the top of this. I grab a block plane, and for chamfers, it's fairly easy just to eyeball them. Uh, a lot of people spend some time really drawing them out, or they'll get a chamfer plane that gives oh. exactly the precise size. I just like to do this. Sorry, did I cut you off, babe? 
Well, then he clarified with, um, why did you start work? Was it for money or did you just like it? Oh, I liked it. It was a hobby. Um, I used to do some woodworking for money and actually sell my woodworking. Um, but I find that if I sell what I make, it becomes a job and that stresses me out. And the reason I want to do woodworking is to have some fun. And so that's why even wood, wood by right, I don't sell what I make. Um, my business is making YouTube videos and not making woodworking. So I'm not particularly a woodworker. I am a content creator. There we go. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't have any problem with, with selling what I make. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's not for me. Just trying to square these up, even them up. Trying to make all these corners match without going too far in any one cut. Oh no, I busted it off. Oh well. Now if I really wanted to, I could come in with some super glue and clean that up, but eh, I don't really want to. I know that that, 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 that hurt a whole bunch of people out there. Okay, so so Duck says camphor. What's it, what's a camphor? Am I even saying it right? Chamfer. Chamfer. See, I'm not even saying it. A right. chamfer is a 45 degree cut or an angled cut on a corner. So rather than having it come to a corner here, I've taken off that corner and so now it's a three facet. So you have 90 degrees from this face to this face with a 45 degree in between. That 45 degree in between is a chamfer. And I love chamfers. They're just a nice, sharp, clean. And if you ever really want to clean them up, a file is a great way to clean up a facet. Make it really nice and smooth. Give you a nice flat surface. Because if you use a sanding paper, you're going to end up rounding those over. Whereas with the file, it keeps it flat. Okay, so now we have a stick here, which is basically done. If I wanted to, I could stick that in and have it fun. Um, but this just looks clunky out here. It doesn't need to be this fat out on this end. So we're going to thin that down a bit. So I'm going to do that by putting it here in the vise and do a progressive shaving. A progressive shaving is something that confuses a lot of people. And I'm not quite sure why. The idea is I want to take off more material on this end than I have on this end. But if I take a plane pass from one end to the other, it's just going to take the same amount over the whole thing. And that's not going to make this thinner than this. It's just going to make the whole thing thinner. So what I can do is start here at the end, and I'm going to come in about a quarter inch or so, and I'm going to take a pass here. And then I'm going to back up about another, another quarter inch or so, take a pass there. Another quarter inch backed up, another quarter inch, back up, another quarter inch. And each time I come back, I'm just going to take off another quarter inch until I come back to here. And then if I see if I take off enough, then I'll stop, or otherwise I'll do it over again. Start there, quarter inch. I'm getting quite an education over here about camphor versus chamfer and what the different uses for camphor are. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then the, the other thing is whether or not you're British, then it's uh, uh, chamfer. It's with an S-H. Well, it's still spelled C-H, but it's pronounced chamfer, not chamfer. Oh, no. <laughs> Then we can see how much is it changing. You see, we already see here how it's much, much thinner down here. So to make it even, I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Right. I think I did three. So of which them. plane are you using right now? This is a Veritas combina uh, um, custom plane. My all-time favorite plane. I have it set up for smoothing. Although right now I'm taking shavings that are probably about three thousand so they're pretty fat for what this plane is normally set up for there you go nathan um but the custom plane is really one of my favorite planes they allow you to choose the angle of the bed and i think i have my 45 in here right now uh, they allow you to choose the steel of the iron they allow you to choose the front knob and the tote uh, let's see, what else do they allow you to choose? There was one other thing. 
I don't remember what it is. But then it also has a bunch of other settings. It's a normal plane, except for you can open and close the mouth like you would with a low angle, which is phenomenal. There's set screws on the side here that actually catch, capture the iron. So when you put it back in, the iron is at the same spot every time. It's just a, a lot of great innovations that make it a fantastic plane. And one of these days, I'd like to get a full set of them. Um, but right now, I just have the smoothing plane. OK, so there. You can see how that's much thinner now. It's uh, a little bit thinner than a quarter inch here at the tip. So, um, you know what? It looks kind of uh, fat this way. So let's thin down this angle a little bit. What now? My wife is laughing behind my back. This is never a good thing. We were talking about you were chiseling towards yourself and you know, how that's not the right thing. And uh, <laughs> who said it? Um, Russ Stable says, I thought he was going for the custom woodworkers vasectomy. <laughs> Some people pay good money for that. Uh, <laughs> there is one way. <laughs> well, you know, there, there is the, the old rule of never chisel toward yourself and you'll never have a cut. And that, that's a very good rule. Um, but, you know, if you have control over the chisel and you understand what it's doing, if you are actually, if you're tapping the chisel or using a mallet, I will often tap towards myself because when you're tapping, you're putting so little force in it, it's never going to jump. The problem is if you are forcing the chisel and you're putting it and it catches in something, when it releases, you have no control about how far it's going to go. And so when you're chiseling towards yourself, you want to make sure that the pressure you're putting on it is never enough for it to release and push past. Um, and so that's why until you trust yourself, don't ever aim this towards yourself. But because I have a camera, I can't move around to the other side. Um, so I've had to learn uh, with problems of hitting myself a couple times that you always, um, when, you're, when you're chiseling towards yourself, you don't put much of any pressure on this. If you have to put pressure on the chisel, don't chisel towards yourself. Um, but if I didn't have a camera, I would walk around the other side and chisel from the other side. But I have a camera here. All right, let's see. Are you good for another question? Sure. Eric Cunningham asks, what would you consider a good mid-range chisel brand? Also, what are must, what are, what are must-have sizes? Um, let me switch back to this one. That's actually a, uh, Chisels, a lot of people have, my, my go-to, my bench chisels, these are from Aldi. They sell them once a year. They should be coming out in Aldi here pretty soon. Um, they're seven bucks for a set. They're not the best in the world, but for seven bucks, you can't beat them. And I haven't found anything that I really like better than them for the price. Um, next step up, I would jump to over these would probably be the Narex chisels. They're fairly pricey, um, but you can get a whole set for around a hundred bucks. And uh, they're good chisels. They will last you the rest of your life if you take care of them. Uh, after that, the, um, <laughs> there's really too many things to, to choose from because after that, you're getting picky about what you know. Um, but honestly, until you've used chisels for a while, you're not going to tell the difference between, well, the wooden handled chisels from Aldi uh, from uh, Harbor Freight. That's what these ones are. They're my second set. They're the Harbor Freight that you get six of them for 10 bucks. Until you have been working with chisels for a year or more, you won't tell the difference in steel between this and a Lee Valley or Lee Nielsen chisel. Um, they're, they're really decent. Um, now, once you've spent a while and you know what, they feel, what the chisel feels like, you know, then go and buy your dream set. Uh, I don't really see a lot of buying that middle of the road thing because until you've been woodworking for a while, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between a, a cheap, decent chisel and a really good quality steel. Um, but that's my own, <laughs> my own tirade. But that being said, I really do like the Narex chisels. Um, it's top, top notch, high quality steel that will last you for the rest of your life. Um, the, the only question is whether or not you like their handle. So, yeah. Uh, I thought you were going to say depending how long your life is. You know, is it worth Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How long do you plan to live? Um, now, because this is so thin, I'm having a problem holding it. If I put pressure down here, it's, it just keeps sliding down. Another thing you can do is hold the plane still. Keep your fingers clear and do the exact same thing, but pull it on the plane. Let me lock the plane in place. And I'm just taking off a deeper and deeper cut until I cut all the way back. And I'm 
getting a much better cut than I would, or a much faster cut than I would holding it in the vise. Just be careful your fingers don't slip, otherwise you wonder why your wood suddenly turned red. Don't ask me how I know that. Nice mandolin slice. Here we go. Do the same thing on this side. <laughs> and no, need a little more. Just trying to go until I've balanced out both sides and they look relatively similar. Any questions? There was one back when you were using the plane on it. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. There was something about rounding it, but I can't remember where it went. Cool. I thought we were going to do the blue dot thing, folks, that were <laughs> on last month, last week. Yeah, if you want your picture, if you want them to jump out, put an emoji oh. or a blue dot at the beginning. It makes me easier to see. Yeah, the blue dots are nice. Um, S Stephen Alderson again. Uh, will you be doing a round over on it? That's when you were planing. Nope. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of roundovers. They remind me of 90s woodworking and cheap router woodworking. I'm not quite sure why, but I don't, don't much care for roundovers. Personal preference, though. That'd be a good one. Shirt team roundover or shirt team chamfer. <laughs> okay, what I'm doing right now is just taking the edge off of these corners giving them a very light chamfer down the edge. And this is another time where taking the work to the plane is fairly useful. I could do it with a smaller plane, like a block plane, and be a little safer, but oh well. What? And Darth Reeve said I shaved my finger doing that once. <laughs> with how often I make mistakes, I should start my own channel. I'll call it Wood by Wrong. <laughs> You know, I always feel odd about that because one of my common statements is there is no right or wrong way to do it, but my channel name is Wood by Right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the block plane for this. So I want to do a little chamfering up on this tip. And what I'm doing is I'm actually, I don't want to push straight across it. I'm actually going to push at about a 45 degree angle. That allows it to cut a little bit cleaner at a slightly lower angle. There we go. A little bit more right here. Oh, good blue dots. Yay. <laughs> You're making my wife happy. It is. So All there right. we go. There is my toggle. Now we can play with how it actually fits. Let me flip over to this one. You can one. put them on your tunic. What's that? Put them on your tunic. Sorry, movie reference. Put them under my tunic? Put them on your tunic, you know, from A Night's Tale. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's Me called a lance. <laughs> <laughs> we can have whole conversations just using movie reference. Yes. All right. So Paul Stewart asks, um, do you plan on doing a restoration and sharpening video on the large one man cross cut saw in the back of your shop? Uh, if you're talking about this one here, yes, I would like to do that sometime. This one is actually uh, pretty much ready to go. If I sharpen it up, it is, it's live. I have another one that's a rust heap. One of these days I'd love to restore it and do a handle. Um, Oh, come on. Mr. Chickity just put out a video, I think it was yesterday, um, on restoring one. Really cool, fun video. I like his stuff. Um, but yeah, one of these days I'd like to do that. I just don't have a... I have a thousand things I want to restore, and it's, it's down the list a long way, so... Maybe next summer? I don't know. Uh, okay, let's actually put this thing together and make a functioning saw, because we have everything we need to make this thing functional. Uh, so, move you over. Down a little bit, there we go. Focus. And turn your back up. So, here we have the saw. You put the blade in here. Actually, I probably don't need to do that yet. You grab the string, and I was so happy to see that Gramercy had the blue thread. And there, if you read um, documents of how to wrap this up, you are going to have a thousand different ideas. Um, some people say, 
you start by tying it to one end and you wrap it back and forth and back and forth. And some people say, leave it in the middle and leave a knot out there. Um, I am actually going to put it in the middle here. And the easy thing to do is I like to leave about that much and then start wrapping it around these. And you don't want to wrap it tight here because if you wrap it tight, you're never going to get the toggle on there. Um, so I'm actually going to disconnect this and move these together a little bit more. Come on, out of there. So that we can actually get a bit more slop on this. And it doesn't really matter if it's right on there. Get this extra string, there we go. Just wrap it around, around loosely connecting. Making sure I go on the top and then on the bottom and then on the top. I don't want to cross from the one top to one bottom um, because that makes it harder to get that through there. So now I've got the string that ends here and ends here. So I'm going to take this off. It's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. Nice. And what I could do is tie this right here. And I want to make sure that there's enough slop in these that these will touch together and I could twist them together and start working. Um, I don't want them to be perfectly tight. I want it to be relatively loose. So I'm going to make a square knot here. And then once I get this exactly where it is, I can burn off the ends. So with a square knot, well, I'll let you Google a square knot. It's probably easier than me trying to explain it. And I'm sure there, there's some Boy Scouts that are out there that's saying, no, you should do this knot instead. But I like square knots. I don't ever intend on taking this apart. So a square knot will do. It'll give you an even pull on either side. Just like that. And now that I have this on here, I want to even out the strings so that there's an even amount going all the way around. Pull this back together. Go in the slot. There we go. And then we can put our toggle in here. Get rid of those. Tie the string on there. Spin this together. And we'll just keep rotating the toggle around until it gets tight. It's already starting to get tight. And you can hear the saw. Let's see if you can hear this. And as I tighten it, you'll hear that tone change. We're going for a C plus. C plus. <laughs> oh. Guys. That's about right. And it's kind of one of those things you have to learn. Yes, there's a specific pressure. I want it to be a little bit, a little bit loose in there. I don't want to have, I don't want to be cranking this up really high right now. Like right now, I can tell. That's a little higher than I want. Let's hear what that sounds like. Yeah, that's a little bit tighter than I want. So I'm going to stop there for right now. And I'm going to leave these strings loose. I will clean them off and heat them up a little later. But right now, we have a functioning saw. So who wants to see this cut? Is our time? 109? Cool. Switch back to that. So we've got a saw. Let's cut something. I need a test piece of wood. Here we go. This will be interesting. I haven't used a turning saw in a year or so. So let's do this. Um, so with a, with a turning saw, uh, I get the question, or with any bow saw, the question is, do you use it on the pull or on the push stroke? And it is whatever is comfortable for you. Uh, let me switch over to two and give this a little bit of review. Now let's do this. There we go. Ding, ding, ding. Um, so in this case, I'm going to use it on the pull stroke. Um, if I'm using it on a, um, on a bird's mouth where it's on a table that I'm pulling down against, I want to make sure that I'm pulling down. If I'm doing it in a vise, most of the time I'm going to want to be pushing, but because this is way up here and flexible, um, pulling gives you a little more control. So I like to start when pulling close to myself, lightly lift the weight off of the saw, uh, lift the weight off of the, the teeth, so you're just pulling, the, you're just nicking the teeth across. Oop. This one's going to be fun. Maybe I do want to tighten it up a little more. Getting a little too much bounce in the, uh, the saw blade. And 
there you have it. You can do just about anything you do with a bandsaw. You can do with a turning saw. And the cool thing is once this is done, what we'll end up with is we'll have handles on here. So while the handles are on here, we can actually rotate the blade. So I can keep the blade at this angle, but then bring the head back up around. Um, but most of the time, I'm going to end up holding on to here rather than holding on the handle, or some combination of the two. Although it does feel very weird not to have the handle on here. Let's just cut this off. Ta-da! Little piece cut out of there. Here, why don't you zoom in and see. little piece right there <laughs> um, so it is a very functional fast saw and oops, let me switch back over to one and you can get it with a bunch of different blades right now I have I have the medium one in there and this one I think is what eight TPI no maybe 10 TPI um, and I have all three that uh, um, tools for working wood cells so we have a functioning saw. I could stop there and be done with it, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> so I think that's about it for this week in the build. Um, so next week, we're actually going to get into making the handles for them. And I will have one of them made up. Now, in a lot of the traditional forms, you have a longer handle and a shorter knob. Um, I actually like having two handles because sometimes I like to turn it around and use it the other way. Um, so I'm going to make one of them ahead of time and then show you how to make the other one and then glue them up. So next time we'll have handles on this. And the time after that we're going to do some shaping and then possibly some carving. Uh, so this will be uh, coming along. So hee -hee, we have a functioning saw, which I am very, very happy for. So we have any questions? Yes, we have several blue dots that we need to go back through. All right, hang on. Uh, da, da, I love this da, blue cord. Da, da, da. This is... Oh, easy. very important question from just going top down. Duck wanted to know what your favorite ice cream is. Oh, I don't know if I have a favorite ice cream. Um, yeah, blue you cord, have a favorite it. store that you like. Yes. Ice uh, well, okay. That being said, my favorite ice cream is coffee, uh, coffee flavor from Cold Stone Creamery. Um, but you have to mix in gummy bears and cookie dough. That that is like that's that's the the king of, of kings when it comes to ice cream. Uh, so, yes, coffee, ice cream with gummy bears and cookie dough. Um, no. I think my favorite random flavor is probably Moose Tracks. Oh, that's pretty good. Second would probably be cookie dough. Yeah, cookie dough is good. All right. Let's see. Russ Staples said, I had old marples chisels for years. Then went to Lee Nielsen and tried theirs. Oh, it was easy to see the difference. A2 still rocks. Have you tried them? Have I tried the old marples? Marvel's or Lee Nielsen, I think. Yes, I've tried both. Um, uh, I actually the the old marples are one of my favorite handles. Um, I just like that that shape. That is a very very comfortable shape to me. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the socket chisels, so that's the thing that's the turn off to me on the Lee Nielsen. Um, but they're they're great. Um, as to noticing the difference in the steel. Uh, Yes, there are many differences, and it depends on which marples you're talking about. The really old ones, there's a very wide variety of steels you'll find. Um, and a lot of people talk about the old Sheffield steel, um, and a lot of it was really good, and a lot of it was, was good. <laughs> um, because of, yeah, there's just a lot of other things that made it a little bit less um, specific. But I know I'm getting a lot of people angry, so I'll shut up now. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. And then they said you need to go back into the future and neon wood dye and decorative aluminum rivets all over because you were talking about the 90s earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you ever tried the Narex hand-stitched rasps, Kim Allen asked? Yes. Uh, they're, um, what's the company that actually does the stitching? Um, oh, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Someone will remember here. But yes, um, there I've used them many times. I do not own any because I have not spent the money on them. But yes, I would love to get them. Um, a, a good set of rasps is something I don't have. All my rasps uh, come from 
um, estate sales and usually they're from like a bucket of files and rasp and so a lot of them are, are pretty old and worn out and I actually don't think I have a hand stitch rasp in my collection which I'd like to get so they, they're making smoothness of cut is, is phenomenally different when you get hand stitched as opposed to machine 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 stitched sure <laughs> And then Steve Alderson said, can you over tighten the blade? And I think there was a bunch of discussion, but I'm yes, guessing yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, you can over tighten the blade to the point that something on the saw snaps. Um, that's actually what killed my last one is I over tightened it and actually snapped the blade. Um, and so that, that's a good way to find out how far you should tighten it is over tighten it and you'll find that right beforehand you'll notice something going wrong on it and then pop. <laughs> um, Hopefully the, your beams are the strongest point because if anything breaks, you want it to be the blade because the blade is intended to be replaceable. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's basically what happens. All right, see. Raven's Tighter is better, but too tight breaks. Raven's Path asks, have you considered doing, I'm going to butcher the Shao Sugiban? It's Japanese. Oh, okay. Yes, a um, that is, that's a great fun finish. I've done it on a few things. Uh, Shushuki Ban is where you, you burn the surface um, and then you come back and you wash it off. And there's a bunch of different things that you can do after it. Some people scrape it down so you can actually see a, uh, a difference between um, early growth and late growth. Um, some people leave it as black as possible. Uh, but it's a good way of, of burnishing a surface and getting a really durable fern surface through the charring of the wood. So, yeah. Is that a uh, super chat I see? I don't know. I'm not down there. Yes, Darth Dweeb. Darth Dweeb, my favorite man. You get a, a happy, happy dance. Happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> I really do need to integrate something. If any of you have some idea, on, I'd like to actually integrate something in here. So if someone does a super chat, you know, it changes lights or something moves in the background or I don't know. It'd be so kind now of you got to go to Canada. <laughs> go to Canada? That's what he says. For your travels, hopefully to Canada sometime. I would like to. Um, on this trip out... Um, I was going to be going up into uh, um, British Columbia, but uh, that fell apart. Um, I was was trying to make a, a, a get together with um, um, the uh, oh come on uh, samurai samurai woodworker, um, but that fell through. So there's a, there's a few people up there I'd like to get to um, that and uh, um, Tommy Huffington. I'd like to go up to his shop sometime. But yeah, there's a lot of places up there. Oh, um, the hand tool, um, hand tool rescue. I'm trying to make one up to his, but he's like way up into Canada. Um, it would be a, be a fun drive. That'd be a good time to go up there. But yeah, give me some event up there that I need to go to, and we'll make it happen. All right, and then Aubrey Kuhn says, "What do you do to keep your shop relatively clean?" And they're talking, and then more like the shavings and such. I said it was where you angle. I invite over friends. And that is my, my force to clean the day before. Um, now I have um, every other week, um, I have a videographer come here and we actually do a bunch of projects, which if you guys want a quick sneak peek, I, I made this. <laughs> it's pretty. Um, and uh, so we did a, a few videos. Those will be coming out in September. And uh, so whenever he comes, it's like the day before I have to clean everything up. And so that's my, my big impetus for cleaning. But most of the time, if I know someone's coming over to take a look at my shop, I try and clean it then. Um, I think that's the, the big encouragement. Otherwise, I would, I would just let it get more and more of a mess until someone screamed or one of the kids cut themselves on something, and then I'd have to clean up. You have a very big push broom. That's usually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the nice thing is with hand tools, um, because I don't have any power tools, all of my hand tools that are here, it takes me five minutes to put away all my tools, or even less. Most of the time it's just a minute or two, because I can turn around, everything is within reach. Without moving my feet, I can touch almost every tool in my shop. And so it's just pick a piece up, put it away. I can put all my tools away like that, and then everything else is wood curls. And so I sweep off my bench, and then I sweep around my bench and have a pile to throw away. Um, the only problem is when I go shopping, and I have a whole pile of tools to restore, or other things that come in here that are going to be done in the future, and they just kind of pile up. like the table yeah I should get on that thing <laughs> but we're gonna come back to that after a couple of questions <laughs> so then Aubrey Quinn others would paracord fishing line nylon thread or poly rope work to tension it or does it need to be a certain strength no yeah all of those would be perfectly strong um, they're all going to be stronger than the uh, than the blade connection usually um, yeah use whatever you have on hand Right. Actually, my old one was done with a with a nylon um, 
Uh, what do you call it? Nylon cord. It was a string, basically. And then Duck had the question, is it missing the turning handles? But I think you addressed that. While you yeah, were those there. will be what we're working on next week. Um, we're a little behind in my question. Actually, I might not be doing those next week because I'm flying back in on Tuesday. So I probably won't have time to set those up. So next week, we'll probably be shaping the beams. Yeah. All right. Let's see. If I can get to that. Maybe next week we'll be doing something completely different because if, if my flight my flight is late or something of that nature, then who knows? Then maybe I'll just take over. Yeah, I'll see what my wife does. Yeah, <laughs> I'd have to figure out how to set this thing up. All right, Duck says, does this mean you could do some like resawing with this saw? Um, you could, uh, but it's not intended for that. It's a, it's intended to have, um, particularly on this size, it's intended to have a very thin, thin, small, delicate blade. Um, so it's great for turning and, and carving a weird shape. Um, as to um, resawing, you generally want a very large, sturdy blade with big teeth. And so having something this small and delicate, I mean, if you had a small board, so if I had something that was two inch, I, I, I could resaw with that and then turn the blade so I can cut this way. Um, but turning this, is it makes it unbalanced if you're trying to cut this way with it because all of your weight is out here, so you're constantly trying to keep the blade up, so you're always fighting the saw. Whereas resawing with a frame saw, um, and there's a, there's, a, that's a really, there's a good question there. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me, what's the difference between a bow saw and a frame saw, or why do you call this a turning saw? I've heard a lot of people call it a bow saw. Um, a bow saw is a big term for any saw that has a tensioning device on the outside. Um, so your blade is on the outside, your tensioning device is on the outside, and your compression is on the inside. Whereas a frame saw, like uh, my big frame saw back here, the saw is in the middle, so the saw is in tension, but then there is a, a frame on both outsides. And those frames are what are in compression. So that's a frame saw. So in the bow saw family, you have a turning saw. Um, you also have a, uh, where did I put it? Oh, it's buried back in here. Um, you have a buck saw, which is the, the big brother of this with a big blade. Um, and then you have your, uh, um, your uh, coping saws that are where the blade is in tension and the compression is in the middle. So a bow saw is a bigger term for a bunch of other saws in the middle, whereas a frame saw tends to be um, that style, which is more for your resawing, your pit saw, and your big work. Because, they're, because the blade is in the middle, it's balanced on either side, so when you're cutting vert vertically, there's as much saw on this side of the cut as there is on this side of the cut, so that it's easy to balance the saw. So, yeah, hope that answers it. All right, hang on. Um, oh, this is I can't explain how. how oh, Darth you best. Thing. Are you going to have any more furniture builds? I mean, in like 2020, after your table's done. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I do have more. I'm I'm kind of playing through where I, what I want to be doing with the channel. Um, and part of that is I'm leaning more and more towards doing the video work um, with Luke because it turns out much better videos. The problem is I have to do all my woodworking in the two days a month that he's here, so every other week. Um, and that works great, but it doesn't work well for furniture builds because I can't you know, build a large amount of material, a large amount of furniture one day every two weeks and still produce enough videos to fill out everything in between. Um, so I like that style of video, but I want to put out more furniture builds. Um, and so part of me is thinking sometime in the future I might switch away from doing three videos a week to doing just two and do one live and do one furniture build because I can do two videos worth of work in one day um, and, and put that out. And, and um, so I, I'm, I'm playing with that. I want to do more furniture builds, and I, I would like in the future the large majority of the videos to be furniture builds and really in-depth furniture builds, but I don't know how that will turn out. So we'll see. All right, let's see. Bathroom Carpenter, hickory is a good wood, right? Or is it too heavy? Oh yeah, hickory is um, hickory is fantastic. Um, the, the traditional um, best wood for a bow saw uh, would be beech. Beech is the traditional wood. Um, second would probably be hard maple. Uh, third would probably be hickory or maybe ash. Um, walnut is down the list a long ways, but walnut looks good. And for a small saw like this, walnut will do fine. But yeah, hickory would be a great wood for it. It'd be a lot more work because hickory is a very difficult wood for hand tools. 
Walnut is a very easy wood for hand tools. One of the reasons why I picked it. <laughs> uh, Aubrey, could, have you ever used dogwood? Um, I don't think I ever have used dogwood. So no, I don't have much experience with it. But I'm always willing to try. Right, Got anything else? Yeah, give me a second. Ah, okay. Sorry, I'm getting heifer. I answered that one too quickly. <laughs> so Michael Bryan asked or stated, just purchased a vintage number no. seven jointer plane. The lateral adjust rubs the top of the tote. Any suggestions on what's going on? Number seven plane, the top. Oh, I see what you're saying. So uh, switch over to this camera. The, let's see, you're talking the lateral adjuster here rubs on the top of the tote. My horn on this tote is broken, but where the, the knob would hit. Um, so basically, there's one of two things that's wrong. Well, possibly three. If the iron is bent, pushing the whole thing down, well, then the problem's your iron. Um, number two, the, uh, the lateral adjuster itself could be bent and pushed all the way down. The lateral adjuster should be sliding against the underside of the iron, so it should be tight up against the iron. Um, so if it's bent, then take your iron off and bend the lateral adjuster back to where it needs to be. Uh, number three, the tote could have been replaced at some time because a lot of woodworkers would make their own totes bigger because they might have really big hands. Um, and especially with the, with the number seven, it's a big plane and you just kind of expect it to have a big handle, but it's the same size handle as all the others. Um, so if someone made a bigger uh, tote, then it might be up too tall for that, in which case you could make your own tote that'd be down or you could just live with it rubbing against the handle. Um, that may have been what someone has done in the past. So hope that answers your question. All right. I love a good number seven. Stephen Ellerson asks, is it true that you can drink your boiled linseed oil? Yeah, yeah, you could. Um, I wouldn't because it's a laxative. That's what um, I said. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it will look like you go, but it's basically all it is is uh, linseed oil, raw linseed oil. Um, and <laughs> when we first got married, someone gave us a, uh, a box of flax snacks, and linseed oil is flax seed oil. Um, and we were married, we were dirt poor, and so I we ate these like flax snacks for my lunch months. every day, and I eat like an entire bag of them. And... I didn't know why at the same time every day I had to stop what I was doing and run to the bathroom. And after like two weeks of this happening every single day, I was like, wait a second. I'm eating like five pounds of flax every day. So, yes. Um, don't, don't drink the, the boiled linseed oil. But yes, if, if you wanted to, the, the stuff I make, you could drink it. The stuff in the stores, do not... Um, it has chemical dryers in it, not good for you to ingest. Um, but if, uh, if you make it yourself out of just mm. pure raw linseed oil, then uh, it's a different story. <laughs> but don't do it. It's not fun. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, and then there's food rec or ice cream recommendations. Fred McIntyre says, Ben and Jerry's Half-Baked and Americone Dream. I'm kind of intrigued what that is. And next time you have cookie dough ice cream, try Smucker's Microwave microwavable hot fudge on it that sounds good and then abercoon says ube ice cream is really good uber ubi is a philippine purple yam hmm. and then i think we're getting into shop ideas or video ideas because duck says live and one furniture build sounds good and bathrobe carpenter says one live one furniture and one miscellaneous question mark and abercoon says live furniture and tip slash tool maybe those are all ideas so. that i've been thinking about um, I don't know. Uh, and then deep fried ice cream is another recommendation. Now, part of me would like to actually slow down on the videos and actually put more quality into them. Um, I, I like that idea, but then that changes the whole dynamic of what the, the channel is actually doing for us. Um, so I don't know how that will turn out. So a lot of ideas. We'll see. And then let's see a question from Paul Stewart. Um, what are your thoughts on the Stanley 55 spoke shave, the one with the concave curve? Stanley 55 or Stanley 51? 55 is what is typed. 
Uh, Stanley 55 is not a spoke shave, it's a combination plane. Um, but I think you're referring to the... Actually, I don't remember what that is. I think you're referring to this one, which is a... Let's back over to this. Focus! Did I switch? Yes. Um, I can't remember, the, but this one also has, it has a concave cutter and a flat cutter. Um, the concave cutter sounds really good, but anything you have to have, anything you can do with a concave cutter, you can still do with a flat. Um, so I almost never use the concave, actually I've never used the concave side. Um, and because that then makes the flat off center, it makes it a little more of a pain to use. So I, I rarely, um, I've only used this thing once when I first got it. So I'm thinking that's what you're talking about. Um, if not, uh, let me know. Because the Stanley 55 is a combination plane. The king of hand planes. All right, let's see. Um, blog das Medras. I think I always say it wrong. What strong do you use in the saw? I, I know you talked about it earlier. I think you what strong? Finding, what string? Oh, um, there's actually a string you can get at Tools for Working Wood, um, and so it's a three millimeter, no, three point three meter, or eleven foot bandsaw line. Uh, it doesn't say what it is. It's a it's a nylon string, um, but they they sell these that are long enough that you can do them yourself. So it's eleven feet or three point three meters. But they sold it in blue, and you, so you could get it in the kit. And when you buy the kit, you can actually pick which color you want. And I just had to had to get that. Blue okay. makes me happy. Let's see, though. Devender Coker. How many minutes slash per? Oh, how many how many minutes per mile? And are there any crazy runs coming up? I don't know if he's asking how fast your mile is on average. Uh, my mile is relatively slow in comparison to most people. Um, my well, the last mile I did was uh, six uh, six seventeen, and that was my PR. Um, I do more long distance. I like. Marathon for me is the beginning of a good race. Um, if it's you know 50k, 50 mile, 100k, I'm happy. Once the kids are a little older, I really want to get into 100 mile and 200 mile races. Um, so, yeah, I like just hours on end um, of you know 15, 17, 20 hours of just constantly going. That that is fantastic, brain numbingly fun. Numb, yeah. <laughs> Noxic. Uh, let's see. Um, I think we're getting close to time. So. Yeah. Oh, Ken Strohmeyer had a question earlier about a, the meet and greet in Portland. Oh, yes. The uh, um, Before we go, that was mentioned at the beginning of the video. So if you want to go back and look at that, and also down in the description, there is the address to it. But it will be the Starbucks. Uh, it's close to the hotel. It is, um, it'll be on Saturday the 25th, so this Saturday. From 3 to 5 p.m. at the Starbucks, it is 10225 Southeast Sunnyside Road. Um, so it's basically around the corner from the hotel. Um, we'll be meeting there, and I'll probably be doing a few things on social media announcing it, but the address for it is in the description, 3 to 5 p.m. on Saturday. So looking forward to it. All right, there's a couple of questions. I'm just going to let you answer when you hop on here. Okay. So... Just having fun with this. Cool. I think that'll about do it. So uh, this has been a, another good time. Come in next week, and we will find out what we'll be doing because I will just be getting back in the airplane. Um, so might be wood by Sarah. Yeah, we'll find out. But that'd be kind of fun. Have a Q and A with my wife. <laughs> have her get up and answer questions, and all man the chat. <laughs> you, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> she has a vindictive laugh. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the down in the chat. And I do want to say a huge thank you, especially for the one li the super chat we had. Um, I don't know who was that. Uh, I think it was Darth Dweeb. Was it Darth Dweeb? Yes. Because he wants you to come to Canada. I will have to come to Canada sometime. So thank you for that. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Now we have to wait until she clicks the button. I know, and then I got to get to the right screen. One, two, three, click.